Linda Backerman, Labour MP for Yorkshire and the Humber. In the wake of this PIP implants scandal, you've been raising this here in the European Parliament, calling for a series of measures. If perhaps we could take them one by one. First of all, on the issue of inspections, what is it that you would like to see happen? Well, what happened in France was we had fraud. A company deliberately using a material used suitable for mattresses in breast implants. It was known to the company director, but he did it as a criminal fraud. But when the inspectors came, they gave him 10 days notice they were coming. And so when the inspectors came, they found medical grade silicon. This has to change. We have to have inspections which are unannounced. Otherwise, if there is a fraud, we're never going to detect it. So this morning, we asked the European Commission to change the law to allow unannounced inspections. And they said, yes, they would. And what about the issue of keeping record, keeping track of the implants that women have had? On that level, what would you like to see uh, put in place at a European level? One of the most scandalous things I've heard in the last few weeks is that a woman might have had an implant done, but when she's gone back to the clinic, they haven't kept records of what kind of implant she has, so she doesn't know whether or not it is one of the ones, PIP ones. That can't be right. Several years ago, MEPs asked that a register be kept, a mandatory register at European level, and we want that to happen, and we are going to push in the new law to get such a register, so that each implant would have a barcode, a serial number, just like a medicine, like a packet of medicines, and then it's put in, and each patient will record the barcode, the number, so if there is a problem, we can recall that, that implant. And that presumably would make that compulsory rather than voluntary? Absolutely. The UK tried to have a, a voluntary register a few years ago. It didn't work. But we now have in the UK a mandatory register for knee joints and hip joints. So why not for implants? Anything that goes into your body, in my view, should be treated like a medicine and we should regulate them accordingly. You mentioned that the European Parliament actually called for this a long time ago, about 10, 10 years ago. Why haven't we seen any action? I understand that governments and said it was about over-regulation, red tape. I think we're now finding out that there are certain things where we need proper regulation, a bit like the banks. Um, sometimes we do regulation is not red tape. It protects people and protects public health. And how would you actually see the database, the register, working? Would it be something for medical professionals or would it be something that women can actually access themselves to see where implants have come from? Well, I've worked on legislation on the safety of medicines and for medical medicine safety we have a European-wide database which is publicly accessible. So if you're taking a drug you can look on the European database and find out what kind of adverse reactions there have been and it's obligatory for companies, for doctors, health professionals to record their problems on that database. And in fact, members of the public can also report their issues into their national healthcare regulator, and they too will go on the database. So we have an infrastructure at European level to have this kind of database, and I think we now need to use it for medical devices. And would women be able to, to use that to actually check on their own personal implants? You know, if a situation like this arose again and it was found that a company had been selling defective implants. Women obviously want to know have they had those. Would they be able to access this register to actually find that out? Is that what you'd like to see? Well, the register wouldn't call personal details because obviously that's very personal. What the register would do is record a type of implant and, and, and would track any problems with it. What we want though is that the clinic where you've had the, the um, intervention, the, the operation, they would know what they'd put into you and if there's a recall the clinic can tell you what's wrong with you, what you've had and they should take action accordingly. Just like at the moment with medicines, the, we have a national recall system and you will be contacted by your own GP or by the private clinic if you've gone to a private clinic. And what kind of difference would it make to women, do you think, uh, to, if that information is automatically kept by the clinics how much of a difference would it make in terms of their peace of mind should a situation like this arise in the future? I think it would make a lot. I mean, I heard about a woman who didn't know what kind of implant she had. She went to the clinic, was horrified to find out they couldn't tell her what she'd had, and that's not acceptable. Another woman, she, her clinic did know what kind of implant she'd had, so she's now, her mind's more at rest. So I think um, we do need this system. Medical devices are put inside your body and we need to know who's had what and be able to trace them back to the company that made them and the manufacturer in case there is a problem. And what about authorisation of the implants in, in the first place? Are there changes there that you'd like to see? 
Yes, at the moment it's quite a complex system, but it involves company to company contacts. We'd like a much bigger role for national regulators. When a, a medicine goes on the market, you have to apply to the public authorities to put that medicine on the market, and there's a whole series of tests you have to go through. And there are standards for medical devices, and there are quite high standards. We don't want to frighten people that there are no standards that anything goes, but there obviously have been problems here, and we'd like the national authorities to have a much bigger role to supervise better the way these things are put on the market so that people have more peace of mind. What about the issue of who pays for it if something does go wrong? It's been one of the big issues in, in this scandal. Is there anything that could be put in place that you'd like to see put in place, some kind of insurance scheme, for example? Yes, I mean, the European Parliament can't tell national governments how to spend their health budgets, so we can't tell um, Andrew Lansley to pay for the operation in the UK. But I think what we could ask for is, like for APTA, for example, years ago, lots of... Um, um, travel agencies were going bust and so the government asked them to set up a scheme to insure people against that happening. I think cl private clinics should have their own insurance schemes. If they go out of existence there would be a, a residual scheme available so we could get some funding to, uh, to deal with problems. I think something needs to be looked at quite urgently. It's not acceptable that people find themselves left high and dry with nowhere to go. Now, as you've said, the European Commission is looking at revising. It's called the, the Medical Directives Law here. That's the law that covers, in Europe, uh, breast implants. Are you hoping that these issues are going to be addressed and actually put in place by this new legislation? Yes, well, already we, we have a special group working in the European Commission looking at all the problems. We expect a scientific report by the end of this month. The European Commission, it can only put a law on the table. It drafts laws and then it's up to MEPs and government ministers to look at that law, change it, make sure it's right. The Commissioner said they will put the law on the table in March or before summer certainly and then it's down to us, MEPs and ministers, to make sure we get a much better regulatory framework and to make sure we get something that protects public health much better than we've had to date.